Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, who am I? I'm Patrick, and you can find me online at with Patrick91 almost everywhere. Um, I work at a web agency which is called Think Studios. We do website for clients, and also we have um, internal pro projects. We mainly use Django, but it really depends on what we are building, so we change technologies quite often. But yeah, uh, we try to use new technology as soon as possible because it's, it's good to keep uh, up to speed with the new stuff that's going on on the web, especially on the front end. So the modern web, uh, as uh, web de developers, we have seen the evolution of the web. So from static website to website with small interaction to website completely interactive. And one of the best practice is to use REST APIs for the communication between the client and the server. And, but yeah, uh, REST API are, are good, but sometimes you need something that's, uh, that's better than, than it because there are some issues. One of the most common issues is too many calls. So for example, imagine that you have an API that gets the user with an ID. You get something like this, which is fine, for example, if you only need to see, to show the username. But if you need, for example, the, the friend's names, you need to do a call for, for all, all of the user. And this is, as you can imagine, is not good, especially for the, for the user experience of your application or website. So one solution is to create a new endpoint, which is user with friends, which will return the user with the friends, and so on. But then uh, you need also the avatar for the user. Then you create another endpoint. But uh, in another page, you just need the username and the, the image in the avatar. So you create another one, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, this is only one case, but imagine if you have many endpoints, it's gonna get really bad. So one, another, another solution, like a workaround that you can do is to um, return everything that you can get from, from that resource. For example, you can return the uh, user with the friends and the avatar, but then you, you're sending too much data, you're wasting bytes. And it's not, again, it's not a good experience for the end user because you are wasting their uh, money, actually, especially in uh, a foreign country. So you send too much data in this big block. Uh, one solution is GraphQL. Um, GraphQL is a queer language created by Facebook in around 2012, but has only made open source like uh, two years ago, around 2015. And they say in their specification that GraphQL is designed to build client application by providing an intuitive and flexible syntax and system and so on. This is really complicated for me. And I never read the old document, the specification, uh, because I always saw the example, which is something like this. This is GraphQL. GraphQL is a query language where you can specify from the client what you actually need. For example, in this case, um, you are asking to get the user name, email, and the, the friend's name. And you get, when you do the, this call, you get something like this. So you only get what you actually need, and it's really, uh, it's really easy to use. But one of the most uh, uh, powerful features, and I guess also one of the most liked features is typed. So everything in GraphQL is typed. So basically, your schema is going to have typed. For example, for your previous query, you have an, um, a user type. You just got a name, an email, there are strings, and they are always there, as you can see from the exclamation mark. And then you have a list of friends. And friend is another type, which is going to have probably name and email as well. Um, then another feature is introspection. So basically, every um, uh, GraphQL endpoint is going to um, expose some metadata, so you can get all the types. For example, in this case, you can use Graphical, which is an IDE in browser. So it gives you how to complete on your API and the arguments and the fields. So for example, it's getting the product with ID to the name, the description, and it's getting the picture with size 500 and so on. Um, so right now I've shown you the query, which is basically the way to get data from with GraphQL. But also you need to change the, um, the backend data, for example. Like uh, with REST APIs, you do a post request, patch request, or delete. So with GraphQL, you always use one single endpoint and one single HTTP where, which usually is post. Um, to change data use mutation, which is a way to mutate data on the server. And then you also have another operation type, which is subscription, which is similar to, um, 
to the query, but you subscribe to the update thread, which is using, usually use WebSockets. So a query is done, it's, it's like this, as I showed. You have some fields, and you, also, you can have also some arguments. So for example, in this case, it's going to get the human with ID 1000, the name, the height, with unit of fit, foot. Uh, but this is only a shorthand for the query. The actual, um, the extended version of, of the, operation, the, yeah, the operation is this one. So basically, spe specify the operation type. As I said, you can have query, mutation, and a subscription, and maybe in the future can, can, they can extend the specification. Uh, then you have an operation name, which is basically used mainly for debugging, so you get logs on the server with that. And you also have some variable definition, which include the type that you define, and then you have the selection set. And when you run this query, you get the data that you ask for. But yeah, this is a Python conference, so you want to use this with Python. Um, Here's this with Python, you just uh, use Graphene, Graphene, which is a library uh, that implements the GraphQL uh, server. Uh, so you install it, and then you can just import like this. You import the, the library, you create a class of query. In this case, I'm creating a class which just got only one field, which is hello. And then for each field, you create uh, a function, which is called resolve underscore the field, and you can return what the field is going to um, Return and also you can use the arguments and do some magic stuff, and then you can create the schema from the query, and you can you can execute the query. But yeah, this talk is mainly about Django, and there is an extension to Graph Graphene, which is Graphene Django, which is similar to Graphene, but it's got some um, nice features for Django if you already use it. To to use it, you install like this, and then you have to. Uh, extend the installer apps with uh, uh, Graphene Django, and then you have to create a main schema, which is, needs to be specified in the settings. Uh, my convention is to use uh, a folder called API and a schema file, and inside the schema file it will be the schema, which is being imported from all the other applications. Uh, then you have to add the GraphQL uh, view. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm adding the GraphQL view under GraphQL slash GraphQL, and also I'm enabling uh, Graphical, so I can debug the API without doing any code. And then you, like this, you, if you have an ingredient model, you can just import it, and you can create an ingredient type with the Django object type that's provided by Graphene Django, and it's going to create all the fields for you, so you don't have to do any resolve functions. You can still do it if you need to do some custom stuff, but it's done for you if you don't need to change anything. Then you can create a query where you I have to specify the, um, the query set. And this is something a bit tricky, because since you can do nested fields with uh, Graphene, you need to be careful that you're not doing n plus 1 queries, because um, it's, uh, it's going to be bad on the performance side. So you can, you can check the fields that are needed, and you can do select related or prefetch related if needed. And then you create the schema from the uh, query. So uh, one of the problems that we had uh, at work is to have authentication on the API. And basically, since we are using Django, and it's really easy to do authentication. GraphQL, in this case, is just a Django view, normal view. So you can use any method that you like. For example, we, we were using J JWT uh, tokens. But you can also use session tokens if you don't have a single web page application, if you're only using GraphQL to enhance some part of the website. And yeah, you can use uh, any, any Django stuff. Um, then you have the permission. This is a different paradigm on doing query. So for the permissions, you basically, you're, you don't really have permissions models, but you have permission on the, on the actual fields. Uh, and which is, I think it's really good because you can say, for example, if I'm logged as a super user, I can see the user email. And if I'm logged as a standard user, I can only see the username. Um, but if you, for example, need to uh, have integration with REST framework, uh, for example, you already have an API, uh, this is something that is not uh, working right now. And I made a pull request that you can uh, have a look at it if you want. And you can also use it. I'm using it in, on uh, one of the projects at work, because I need mainly some use cases to test it and see if there is any bugs. 
basically what I've done is to uh, do you can you can use Graphene Django with uh, Django Express Serializer, so you don't have to specify uh, the serializer again, for especially for the mutations. Um, yeah, then I would like to touch on uh, a bit of the security, because um, since you can do uh, nested fields, some malicious user can do like big queries. So, for example, they can nest, they can have like 100 level of nesting. So one of the solutions that I think it's been adopted by GitHub, uh, which is using FQL in production and also it's public, uh, is to just limit the number of nesting that you can have. And for example, if the nesting level is more than 10, they just stop the query, because it's probably something that's a bit strange. And also you have long queries, um, because uh, since you can also specify arguments, you maybe you can end up with a query that's gonna take too much time and I think Facebook is doing something like this. Basically, they have a timeout on the query. When the query is going to take more than one second, they just drop the query and they return nothing, which I think is what, what we should do because uh, one second is already too much. So this is the um, back end part. For the front end, as I said, um, this is you can still use um, any client that you like to do post request to the web server, but um, there are two main libraries that you can use for doing um, uh, queries, GraphQL queries. One is Relay, uh, Relay which is on your right, uh, and basically it's a library developed by Facebook. Uh, it's, it's, it's only for React, so if you use React, this is probably one of probably the best solution because it's supported by Facebook. But the only problem is that uh, the developments that is led, led by Facebook, so uh, they may, they do stuff only if they like, um, but it's really good. And, and the other solution is Apollo, which is a I think it's it's community based, and basically they have clients for for vanilla JavaScript. If you don't use any framework, they also have clients for Vue.js, uh, React, uh, I think also Angular and some other one. Um, I, I was really fast on this talk, sorry. Um, so, gonna touch a bit on the front end part. I don't have slide, but basically, um, with those tool, you can do. Um, there are some other features that I haven't told about GraphQL, but some of those are, for example, fragments. So you can have like some components that d d depends on other data. So you can basically, you can only do one query, including the components, and then you get everything with just one query. For example, if you have an about page, and then you have, uh, for example, the username and in one place, and for example, you have the user friends in another page, you can combine the query from those components, and it's gonna do only one query. And also, um, uh, one of the issues is uh, caching. Since, the, you, since you are doing um, post request, you cannot cache. You, you cannot use something like varnish or uh, pure Django caching um, because you are doing post request. So, the, so one of the solutions that's been implemented by both Facebook with Relay and Apollo is to use uh, client side caching. So Apollo is really good at this. Basically, when you do a query, it's going to cache the result, the results for you. So if you do that query again, it's not going to call the server. It's going to just return the data. And other solutions could be to use um, uh, to analyze the, um, the the query that you are doing and do questions on those ones, but it's a bit harder than than just pure REST APIs because said you're just doing uh, uh, post calls. And probably this is going to improve because uh, GraphQL is quite new, but uh, like a lot a lot of um, companies are using in production, like uh, Facebook, of course, um, uh, Shopify, and GitHub are the main ones, and they're really pushing it uh, to the limits, and they're also contributing to the spec, which is really good. Um, so, yeah, that's my talk. If you have any, any questions, please feel free to do it, and yeah, thank you.
Hey, thank you for the great talk. So my first question is how you deal with pagination using GraphQL. Sorry, how do you pagination? <laughs> how do yeah, how do you paginate? How do you deal with pagination? Oh yeah, there is uh, one of the ways using uh, basically Relay has come up with that sort of pagination system. So as I said, you can specify the uh, the arguments and the query. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yep. So in this case, for example, I'm specifying the ID, but you can also specify, for example, the start and the end. And I think, uh, yeah, Relay is doing something. It's it's using like edges. So basically, instead of returning the the list of the user, in this case, it will return a list of edges. So you can get the IDs and the yeah, the start ID and the end ID. Uh, maybe if you chat with me, I can show you some example because without code, it's a bit hard to understand. Thank you. And my second question is, while using uh, Django REST framework or some kind of a RESTful approach, uh, you can really easily specify which endpoint is public and which endpoint is private. Yeah. Uh, can you do this via GraphQL because you have only one endpoint? And can you specify that this data is public and this data is not public? Uh, well, the answer is yes, uh, but I don't know how to do it because I didn't uh, have to do it. Uh, but I was uh, watching a talk on GraphQL by uh, GitHub. Basically, they're doing something like this. Uh, they have two ways to do this. Uh, the first one is since they have the, the API is public and they can also, uh, for example, you can, with your application, you can log as a specific user. They have permissions, they check before even doing the query, they check the fields that you're asking for, and they check if this free, uh, field is, can be accessed by the current user, then uh, they run the query, otherwise they throw an error. And the other one is the schema. The schema is public, usually. So basically, when you, you expose like, some fields, it's gonna end up on the query, on the schema, schema definition, and they have some metadata on the on some fields that basically they say, oh, this quiz, uh, this field is only for internal use. So when uh, they are logged as GitHub, they so they can see that field. But when they're using as a public user, they don't. It's not shown. All right. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, you said that a lot of companies use it. GraphQL already. For Django, Graphene, uh, did you take any open source project as the reference to see their problems, how they handled it, or would you recommend any open source project to look at? Uh, sorry, can you? Just uh, starting with Graphene and uh, all this stack, would you recommend some open source project as reference? Oh, yeah. So uh, there is, I think there is. There was a Star Wars API, which was done in Python and Django REST framework, I think, and there is the same for uh, GraphQL. So you can just Google for SW API or SW API GraphQL or Star Wars API GraphQL. That's one of those. All right, we had one more question right here. Uh, you mentioned mutations. Uh, do you have any example, or could you talk about how these mutations are done through the query? Uh, yeah, I have an example. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, so basically, uh, mutation is pretty similar to a uh, query. So. Mm. I have to remember where I've done it. It's probably in a second. Okay, that's a mutation. Basically, you specify the um, the operation name, then the name of the mutation, which is used on the server side mainly, and then you specify some inputs. In this case, I have an input which is called input, and then this is the type. Uh, as I said, I'm using JSON with token, and one of the reasons why I did the pull records for the mutations for um, um, for Graphene Django is because I wanted to use this uh, serializer, which does everything for me. And yeah, as I said, the mutation is similar to a query, so you can yeah you have to pass the input, of course, and then you can get the data. You can specify the data that you want back. That's it. Uh, do you want to see the Django part of this? So 
Yeah. This is actually it. It's similar to the when you use um, Django object type from Graphene Django. So you use serializer, serializer mutation, and you specify the serializer class, and then it's going to create the, uh, the mutation for you. And yeah, I'm just adding a token field just to, just because I need it. All right, any more questions? All right, then give Patrick an applause again. Thank you.